Hey, well, Joachim, thank, thank you so much for, for agreeing to, to talk to me and, and give me some advice. I thought we could talk about a few different things, but you know, kind of wanted to first just tell you a little bit about my current situation and sort of you know what I currently have, my objectives or potential options are, and then any advice that you have. In, in terms of the situation, so for me, I'd like to, I mean, fundamentally, I want to make games. And I think that uh, there is a philosophy and an approach that I think work. And not, not to say that that's the only approach, but one that I also want to try and document and, and put onto YouTube. In terms of what I currently have, so one, uh, working with a, uh, a lead game designer who I think is very strong. You know, we've just kind of verbally agreed to try and figure something out and work together. There's a dev team, which is an existing company, and they, they're they kind of live operating a couple of games, 30 people in China. It's a little bit of a more complicated structure there, though, because they have existing investment in the company, but no debt. Mm. Um, and they're kind of like, you know, break even on a couple of games that they're live operating. Uh, but then there's also this 30 person team in China, which is owned by one of the principals of that company just due to the foreign ownership rules in China. And so, you know, there does seem like there might be some potential complications with respect to existing investor, as well as the, the structure and things of that nature. Ideal scenario for me, uh, we could all combine and kind of form a, a restructured, reorganized entity and all work together, you know, given the complications, maybe, maybe not, we'll see. From a financing perspective, you know, I, I think there are, the, the way that I'm kind of thinking about it, there's, there's sort of three options. I, I, and the way I'm thinking about it is I'd like to raise enough money to be able to launch two, two to three games. But whether that's, you know, completely raising money off of equity from venture investment or potentially doing like a publisher deal or, you know, maybe even like vendor or platform financing, like whether it's with Stadia or, you know, Epic's mega, mega grants or things of that nature. So, you know, I'm just trying to think of any other option there, but that's sort of, you know, that's sort of the situation I'm in where, where it's like, there's some people identified, we kind of want to work together, but there's complications in terms of the structure. We're yeah. currently working on some game designs, but don't have those fully fleshed out. And so oh, oh, some of the things that are running through my head is, and Yo Yoke, maybe you could also just, just talk a little bit about, you know, and, and if you're okay with me publishing this on YouTube, you know, it'd be great yes. to have yeah. you talk through your background, your experience with Next yeah. Game, and, you know, even previously, because, you know, you've been super successful, given my situation, would be great to kind of hear your feedback. But, but maybe yeah, I'll, I'll just kick it over to you for right now. Yeah, yeah. Uh, quick, quickly what I'm doing. So, like, Previously founded two games companies here in Helsinki, Finland. First one was a virtual world games company back in 2005. Uh, that that was an interesting ride. It didn't really end well, so we we didn't manage to raise a proper Series A for the company after like you know spending several several years of trying to get a, a game to have good enough metrics to be able to achieve that. Uh, then I went to Supercell for for a small stint uh, to to help out, but I was kind of like planning to to start another company, and then the idea of Next Games came along and started working on that, and uh, the company grew grew pretty nicely. We did the the kind of like IPO here in Finland, and right. then I left this early this year. Basically, just wanted to do something a bit different. Uh, so now I'm I'm building a brand around helping games companies like early stage companies. It's called Elite Game Developers. So there's a podcast with the same name, and a, a book is coming out soon as well. And planning to also looking into kind of like possibilities of building up some kind of like accelerator uh, for games companies, maybe 2020, 21, in that time frame. Uh, also like thinking about participating in other kind of like vehicles similar to that so we'll see how it goes but yeah it's it's super great to kind of like we met a while ago and yeah. uh, super interesting to i've been following the 
your YouTube channel, of course, the podcast. <laughs> Mitka, uh, it's a lot of good stuff. Really, really happy that you're sharing all of this because it's it's kind of like nobody should be in their own corner, kind of like just tinkering and not not sharing. Right. So it's good that there's a lot more people coming out with like what they're doing through these kind of new new mediums. Right. So for for like the first point for your uh, the, the 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 team structure that you're thinking about right now yeah of course it's kind of like everybody's going to be thinking about the question that if you create you know your games your original ip that all the ownership is in that company that, yeah like if you have something going on in china for instance would another uh, if there's a structure there where there's other ownerships which aren't tied into this current company right uh, that's not going to work. It's got to, it's got to, the IP has got to all be held within some type of, you know, US or other organizations. Yeah, that, that's basically where you're going to be, you yep. know, building a company and the strike, like the foundation needs to be very kind of like crystal clear that right. uh, who is working on stuff for the company has the interest of the company in mind as well. Right. Uh, yeah. Though, so I, I, I guess you can make it work. Uh, it depends on how you structure kind of like the the founder like ownerships and everything that if there's a you know of course you could you could structure it that way that the founders of that company basically come on board through their own company but are they working for a company or not that's of course big like <laughs> tricky yeah yeah. <laughs> yeah 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 and then uh the second point that you were like thinking about like the fundraising aspect. Yeah. Uh, I like you were mentioning two or three ga- two to three games. Uh, I guess like the structure should be anyways that way that you have eighteen months of runway. That's usually how right. uh, how many investors see as well that you know they're they're li- they're thinking about the sum that you're going after. Uh, they're looking at two to three games. What does that mean? So in in their world, usually eighteen months is something that you should gun for, and they're kind of also like preparing to be in the same boat with you guys for for that runway. So um, it depends really how you how much money you're going to be spending to get those two to three games out. But I would say like try to at least achieve that in the eighteen months uh, because otherwise, like you're going to be raising money without. What is the traction that you're going to be raising the money on top of? Because first you're going to be raising with the team your own experience. That's the first money that comes in. Right. But the the, the follow, following rounds will gravitate towards like what you've achieved so, so far. Right. So I, I think that's kind of like how you want to structure it. And of course, like keeping keeping kind of like some some kind of milestones in place of how the company will start moving forward. So you can already use that currently as a good leveraging tool of okay this is what we're going to be doing in the next three months and then the following three months we want to achieve this and this will push the company forward and it's kind of like a good traction as well to when you start raising the next round you can already show that hey this is how we progressed through certain milestones right and so in terms of 18 months though depending on the game design that could potentially be yeah, you know, for for a simple game sh- that that could be two to three games, but for a more complicated game that should that you know it, it could be eighteen to twenty four months for a more significant game. I I think the way that I was thinking about it was um, basically a three game strategy where we work on a very simple game first, just to get all of our processes down and just to get something out there. Then the second game would be more complicated. And then the third game potentially would be an IP game, just leveraging some of my relationships. But mm. I think in that scenario, let, let's say it's like 6, 12, 18, then you know, that would be more like that, that would be you know sig- significantly longer. That'd be double, 36 months. Um, do, do you think it's realistic being able to try to raise money against a 36 month time frame, or or should I, I just kind of scale it back? Yeah, I think 18 is sort of like something that you're not going to be giving up too much of the ownership. And right. like there's there's kind of like, like if 18 months is a fixed number, yeah. what will actually move around that is uh, your valuation. And uh, 
that's kind of like, hey, how much do we want to raise right now so that we can actually do something significant in those 18 months? Right. And, uh, like if, if you're thinking about if you wouldn't have that 18 kind of like fixed, yeah. you'd otherwise need to go into like putting up a higher valuation for the company and that creates all sorts of kind of like expectation that's very hard to manage. <laughs> right. Maybe what I could do is to try and actually raise it to your point, go for the 18 months, uh, go with my original strategy, which is the first two games. One is like six months. The other is 12. And then, you know, worst case, I, if, if I want to try to go for that third game, then that could be through a publisher deal of some kind. Yes. That, that might be a, might be a good kind of like bridge. Right. To, to achieve that. Uh, one thing that I've, I've been talking with a lot of entrepreneurs now is that try to figure out how you can actually soft launch as early as possible on right. like Google early access to, to see your numbers and kind of like start developing the game on top of numbers instead right. of, you know, hey, like it, it, the resistance for game devs usually comes from like, hey, this isn't ready yet. We can't really, you know, do do a beta test with proper users, like getting retention numbers, for instance. Right. Because you know, the artwork isn't ready. The, the, you know, all the mechanics aren't in place. Maybe the meta game is missing. But right. if you already have core experience, which is kind of unique, you can start like, you know, getting numbers very early on and everything that you're adding on top, you can immediately test if the numbers are changing with less variables. Right. The, the later you launch a soft launch, it's kind of like, oh, is this the TUI working? Is, you know, is the social element somehow broken? Is the meta, you know, too flat or whatnot? Like if you launch an early version where you only have one of these components in place, it's kind of like, you know, you're adding a new element and you immediately see that that was what changed things yeah. versus like, hey, was it these like 40 different things that you have running in the game. Right. So that, that's kind of like a core core element. And I think that's that's everybody who, who's doing this mode can easily get to profitability with their seed funding already if they're wise with that. Assuming I'm I'm going down the the venture route at least for that first eighteen months of of, of runway, I actually did start a company uh, way uh, many years ago, back in like 2010, 2011, and that was that was a time when you know we didn't even have to try to and and, and kind of raise money very easily. But I, you know, just during E3 talking to a few folks, people the the feedback I got was, "Wow, you're probably not going to be able to raise any money. It's just super tough." Really? Right now. <laughs> Because, you know, there's, you can get, you know, I think angel investments in games are pretty, pretty easy to go after. Okay. Um, so you could raise an angel round, maybe half a million uh, for pre-seed. Okay. I would say like, would a team that, you know, everything's in place, everything's ready. Uh, you know, you have a process in place that you're going to be working with to get the games out quickly to, to see the numbers like half a million shouldn't be a problem. Okay. Like, at least if you come over to Europe, <laughs> I don't know what the, <laughs> the gaming investment scene looks like in the States. Uh, I, I'll, I'll, I'll book my flight. <laughs> yeah, 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 you should. <laughs> okay, okay. Uh, okay, so maybe if I can, uh, if, if I can figure out a way to, to get two game designs that last 18 months, keep it under 500,000, mm. and then try, try to raise that initial you know, seed of, of 500,000. Again, it's been, it's been a long time since, you know, I, I raised any money or try, try to raise investor financing, but cause, cause right now all I have is I've got, you know, have some high level game designs, which we're kneeling down and we're going to have very, very full and very detailed game designs soon. Uh, and then we've got, you know, a kind of a group of people who want to work together, but when, at what point do you think it makes sense to actually start, talking to investors and w whether it's angels or, you know, institutional investors, like how much do you think I should have ready before I, I start to go out? And talk uh, I think that the core thing is the team. Okay. Uh, when you have that kind of in place, then it's, you know, super easy to talk about like what you're doing right now with the team. What is the kind of like the plan uh, for the next week, few weeks, the months, um, when you raise the money, what's going to happen? 
Uh, I think that's that's usually where you where you want to be at if if you're kind of like alone. Yeah, that's a bit tricky because the right. investor is going to have a lot of things to look at, and they're going to be looking at the ones who are more further ahead in this kind of like setup phase. Right. Okay. All right. Cool. I, I mean, a, the little bit of the complex situation is the, uh, as, as I mentioned before, the the organizational structure with like the China development team. And, and I, I think that currently they've, they've kind of resolved that through a number of contracts with the U.S. entity. Right. So it's like U.S. entity, China team, and then if I start a new company, uh, you know, how important do you think it is to combine right away versus, you know, just structuring a contract and deals and then kind of seeing how the first game or two works? Or should I try to combine when I raise that initial seed fund? Uh, it's going to be tricky all the time if there's kind of like this uncertainty of right. who, who is going to be there and if there's a you know a co-founder suddenly leaving <laughs> yeah. usually at, at this like early stage even in the pre-seed you're you're going to be getting uh the investor investors wanting the founders to kind of like be locked down so nobody right. can walk, walk walk away with any shares yeah uh, these kind of situations so there's going to be of course, the, the paperwork is pretty light in this pre-seed stage, but there will be this kind of like need to actually like secure that the, the money that is being put in is not, you know, something that's unstable, that there will be people leaving soon and suddenly there's no development team anywhere. Yeah. anywhere. Yeah, so, yeah. yeah, I think that's that's kind of like a caution there that fixing that first, then it will be much easier. Got it. And then I, I think the, the last question that I have is really around, so, you know, in your experience, you, you know, you've started a few companies before, taken one public, next games, just kind of looking back, going back to that formation stage, what are some of the key issues that, you know, I should be thinking about or, or should try to resolve right away to help, you know, mitigate potential risks or challenges or, or issues down the line? Yeah, uh, I think kind of like setting up this kind of like, you're building a company, so you need to think, discuss these kind of like values and things right. like that so yep. that the culture starts to, to emerge. Because yep. I think that's a, that kind of discussion is a very healthy foundation for your company so that it's, it's easier going forward to kind of like build on top of that and nurture the culture. Right. Uh, so it, it's kind of like it's more than just a game project. I think right. that's how, how I would approach it. That, you know the the company comes first, and then you then you have the games. You know okay. <laughs> that's kind of like a core core thought there. Like of course, like this kind of like that the founders all share the similar ambition levels and similar culture and uh, commitment. And then then you know how you structure the ownership. I, I always think like you know there's. The, what we did in Next Games was that we split, actually. We have four founders, and everybody had four, 25%. Yeah. And we started uh, kind of like, and we started taking salaries immediately after we raised the first post, like the seed. Yeah. Uh, Pre-seed money. Uh, so that, that kind of, if you have people there who are like willing to take more risk or willing to take less risk and want yeah. them want to like a, a proper salary or whatnot, you can have that discussion as well, that how do you structure the kind of like percentage of between the founders? Right. Uh, that's always a good, good discussion to have. Right. I think especially in this situation is, is also complicated because it's hard to value stuff, right. In, in terms of, because, you know, the, the, the two founders of the company of, with the dev team, I mean, they, they've already built a team. They've already built a lot of value. They've got like a break-even operations going. Right. You know, how much should we value that relative to, you know, some of the contributions that I'll be bringing that are the yeah. game bringing, you know. And, and That's so, a good, yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, I, I don't know. Uh, uh, there's, there's a, I was like, I was looking into this kind of like, how do you set it up early on? And I think it's all like, a lot of places people just say it's it's about discussing it through 
what are you gunning for? What kind of percentage would you want? What kind of salary you want? Kind of like compensation there, because later on, if it wasn't the one that you actually wanted, right? Or oh, you're going to be regretting it and thinking about it every day working <laughs> for the company. So you don't want to be in that that kind of position. Right. So kind of having an honest discussion around that. Yeah. Like, I myself never actually thought about like 25% was that too too little or too much because. For me, it, it didn't really like matter too much, you know how much how big is the percentage for myself yeah. right. in the company. But but it depends on people. Yeah, you know everybody's a bit different with how they how they see these things. Okay, for I mean I think fortunately we've got you know at least the sense of the people that we have. I, I don't think there's anyone who's you know super financially motivated or overly you know, sort of greedy or anything. So I, I think we'll be able to work that out. I just, I mm-hmm. guess for me, I just want to make sure that whatever we do is, is, is a, is a fair system. And that, you know, uh, the one thing I don't want is like later on for people to, to have that be something that potentially causes problems or resentment or issues in the company later on. So, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, yeah, yeah but like your role, you're going to be heading to the CEO position right yeah so the like kind of one advice there is that the ceo needs to take care that there's money in the bank you know for the company that's the one of the big roles in the early days so it's kind of like for myself what i saw in my career is that all like you're spending 90 percent of your time raising money (laughs) it's kind of (laughs) it's, it's it's not a healthy mode to get into yeah. So in a sense, like the earlier you can get into kind of like seeing money coming into the company from the games themselves, right? right. Make frees up time for you to do stuff with the team. Right. Like think about how you're growing the the company instead right. of running around for chasing money. Right. That's got it. Got that's it. Not healthy. <laughs> So, like, if you can now raise for the 18 months, it makes sense. Of course, like, if there's a lot of interest, uh, maybe you could already think about when you're going to be raising the next time that you have already kind of, like, people who are going to be there if certain milestones are met so that you don't need to start everything all over again, like, six months later. Right. So planning a bit, like, how you spend time is always very effective. Okay. Yeah, I think that's all the questions that I have. Uh, yeah, Let's no. Do another one when you when you're a bit further. Oh yeah, for sure. I I'd, I'd love to you know continue the discussion and get more feedback. And you know, as soon as I when I get an investor presentation ready, I'd I'd love to 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 show it to you and and hopefully get some feedback from you. Well, great. Well, thank you very much for your time, Joachim. And uh, I will. See where see, see where life takes me next. We'll, we'll yeah, see. good luck to that. Yeah. All right. See you, okay. man. Bye. Ciao. Ciao.